Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I want to talk about this question that comes up a lot on internet discussion boards, and that is, did Hitler cancel the Sturmgewehr? Did, was this a program that was actually secretly run by the German military against Hitler's direct wishes? The answer is pretty much yes, but it's a little more complicated than what a lot of people may realize, and so I thought this would be a cool opportunity to go through the actual chronology of the development and full-scale adoption of the MKB-42, which became the MP-43, which became the MP-44, which became the STG, the Sturmgewehr 40. So this program begins before World War II. Uh, in the 1930s the German military is investigating semi-automatic self-loading rifles, as is basically everybody. Most of these programs end worldwide when the war breaks out, company, countries have to focus on the production of guns that are already well proven, things they can put straight into the field. Now, the development of an intermediate cartridge select fire rifle is seen as one of the more promising things that the German uh, arms industry is developing, and so the development of this particular program continues after 1938. By 1942 it is officially designated the MKB-42, the Machine and Carabiner. Uh, machine carbine. It's not a machine pistol, it's not a submachine gun because it uses an intermediate cartridge, it's also not a Gewehr because it doesn't use a rifle cartridge. But at this point, in uh, March of uh, 1942, the gun is formally designated MKB-42, and there are two of them at this point. There is the Walther gun, which is closed bolt and really quite complex to manufacture. Uh, at this point that's the gun that the German army general staff really has its hopes on. There's also a gun from Hanel, which is simpler to make, it's also open bolt, uh, and at this point there are 50 of the Hanel guns that have been produced, and there's one of the Walther guns. Now, those 50 plus the one Walther are all tested in April, or in late March of 1942. The testing goes really quite well. The, the Walther gun seems like the better one, but the concept is really sound. The army general staff is really excited by it. They see a potential for this to replace the standard German infantry rifle. Get rid of the bolt actions, give everyone a machine gun. Uh, and so they present this to Hitler in April of 42. And they get the they do not get the response they were expecting. Uh, Hitler basically says, yeah, we're not doing that. Uh, and he gives a couple of reasons. First off, he's thinking about fighting in the desert, he wants effective ranges on weapons to be 1200 to 1500 meters. We'll ignore the fact, apparently he did, that the Mauser K98K does not have that effective range because you can't see squat that far away and actually hit it with Mauser sights, but this is advertised as having a maximum range of 800 meters. Hitler wants 12 to 15, can't do this. Uh, he also thinks like it's way too much work, it's going to be too intensive, too much resource use to adopt a new rifle like this. And then he also busts out the MacArthur uh, rationalization. He says, you know what, we've got six billion rounds, with a B, of 8mm, eight, eight 8x57mm eight Mauser ammunition, this new rifle can't use it, therefore this new rifle is a dumb idea, and we're not doing it. So the Army General Staff uh, comes back from this, like they haven't changed, they, the gun's been rejected. This is the first example outright of Hitler saying, no, we're not going to do this gun. Uh, it, this does not change the army general staff's opinion. They go on, con they continue with development and trials, and they'll do this for about another six months. Um, they eventually get more of the Walther guns in, they realize, you know what, the MKB-42W is actually not that great a gun, the Hanel design is a substantially better gun, that's the one we want to go for. And by the fall of 1943, they've come to the conclusion that the, the MKB-42H, that's the gun. They've, they've dropped the Walther, the H is the good one, and now they're ready to present this to Hitler again. So in November of 1942 the Army General Staff prepares essentially a detailed white paper on the military virtues of the intermediate caliber assault rifle. And they get a couple of particularly well-regarded, knowledgeable officers to write introductions to it, they put all their thoughts together, the idea is like, okay, well, we must have presented this badly because it's so obviously the solution that we need. We'll do it right this time, here's, here's everything laid out in nice detail, step by step, very clear, they present it to Hitler, like, now, now he'll, he'll approve this project, right? And the answer is no. Once again Hitler rejects the concept of the Sturmgewehr which I should say isn't being called the Sturmgewehr yet, but it's a good term for the gun, it's what they would call it later, so we're going to go with it for now. 
his, his rationale this time is a little bit different. Uh, the note that he basically sends in response is, we're not doing this uh, like the first time I told you guys that. He foresees the army needing two separate types of weapon. They need probably a self-loading, but definitely a full-power infantry rifle with maximum range, with a telescopic sight, rifle grenades, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they need a submachine gun for close quarters combat. And this thing, in Hitler's view, doesn't do either of those roles effectively. It doesn't have optics on it. Yeah, this particular one has an optics rail that wasn't part of the program at this stage. There's no grenade launcher at all for this thing. Like, how do you expect to defeat the Russians without a grenade launcher on every gun? And, and of course it's limited in range still, it's an intermediate caliber cartridge. And then also, this thing is too heavy to be an effective submachine gun. So, no. I'm rejecting it again. We're not doing that. Now, Army General Staff made one, like, a last-ditch attempt to convince him, and they figured maybe we can do it with an in-person demonstration. And they arrange, in early December of 42, a really significant uh, mock assault, mock battle, a demonstration of, of the gun. Uh, they're, they've got enough in, you know, invested in this that they actually do a complete run-through, like a, a practice run, of this demonstration uh, the day before. This is set up exclusively to convince Hitler that the gun is good. There's nobody else attending this demonstration who needs to be convinced. Normally an organ, uh, you know, something like this would be set up to get honest feedback. You know, let's talk to all the different branches of the military and see what everyone thinks of this, and is it a good idea? This particular demonstration Everybody who's there already agrees that this, this, that right there is what we need in Russia. Now, again, to be fair, what they're talking about at the time is the MKB-42H. Close enough. Um, the day of the demo comes, and Hitler is a no-show. Uh, still not interested in it, guys. Uh, it just he doesn't want to see whatever stupid games they've got lined up, and uh, declines to participate. So, at this point they do a couple of things. Um, they are going to change the name of the gun from Machine and Carabiner to Machine and Pistol, MP. And that is done largely, well it's done in fact, to hide the nature of what the gun is. This is at about the same time that they are converting it, they're switching from an open bolt system to a closed bolt system, which will be a major improvement to the gun. Uh, and they, they redesignate it. Like Hitler's, like maybe if he sees MKB one more time on some reports he's going to get really pissed and like throw us all in jail, uh, in camps. So, but we still think, like, legitimately this is what the army needs, and we know what's best for the army, and we're going to try to do it. Uh, and so we're going to keep developing this thing, and they order it into initial production so that they can send uh, guns to the Eastern Front for actual troop combat trials. Now, come February of 43, so just a couple months later, they make one more attempt and uh, actually present the, the guns to Hitler in the field. And there's a very famous photo of Hitler kind of grumpily staring at a pair of Sturmgewehrs sitting on the table. And that's that's in February of 43. And this is the third time he's been presented with these guns, and it's the third time that he rejects them. And he's kind of pissed this time. Like, we're not doing this! I've told you guys how many times now. We're doing MP40, uh, sorry, we're, we're doing G43s, and all work on this crap stops now. So he actually does put his foot down and demand that they cease Cease development, cease production, knock it off, stop. However, he reneges slightly, because it's pointed out to him that, well, this the initial production has been um, on order for a couple months now. Hanel wasn't building all of these guns entirely by themselves, they were subcontracting a lot of the small parts production, and they've got a lot of parts already in stock. Like, it's not that much more work for them to complete the first batch of guns, and does Hitler really want them to just throw away all of that work? How about instead they just make a special series of these guns, using the parts that they've already built? Like, we'll just do the last bit of work, we can assemble them, and we promise, we, we, like, we pinky swear that we're not uh, still trying to make this the official infantry rifle, but we've got these guns so close, like, we might as well send them to Russia, because even Hitler will recognize at this point that the German army in Russia needs all the help it can get. And so he agrees grudgingly to that. And so uh, February, that, that production continues. It's not like they order it, because they'd already ordered it, but it, it does continue. Um, the first batch of, uh, again at this point, they are MKB-42s in fact, they're MP-43s in name, they arrive in Russia 
uh, 2,000 guns for combat trials. This would prove to be one of the critical uh, factors in allowing the guns to actually continue in production, because once they get into combat trials, people start actually having experience with them, and troops in the field start recognizing them. Now, the Soviet Union had been dramatically increasing its use of self-loading and fully automatic uh, weapons. They, they were really ramping up use of submachine guns. There were a bunch of Soviet self-loading rifles that were all being used by the German army whenever they could be uh, gotten. Whenever they were captured, they were put into service as substitute standard rifles by the Germans. The German army is it's losing manpower. It's taking massive losses, and it is not able to reconstitute its forces in the way that the Russians are able to. At the same time, the Russians are increasing the firepower of their forces by dramatically increasing the number of submachine guns that they're issuing, as well as self-loading rifles. And if the German army is going to pull off any sort of victory, or even lessen their rate of retreat, they need more firepower. They can't get any more manpower, they're pretty much scraping the bottom of the barrel there. They need to get the, the troops something better than these ob clearly obsolete bolt-action Mauser rifles. And so uh, troops start seeing them and start requesting them. Now the tide begins to turn in October of 43, when Hitler is convinced to accede to the MP43, officially replacing just the MP40. So. Like we've seen the trials reports, um, he changes his mind a bit on this thing. Finally, he's like, okay, I guess it's got a place, but just to replace the MP40. It's a new MP, right? That's what it's called. So, um, part of the reason for this, a large part of the reason, is probably that of ammunition supply. Frankly, throughout, until really at the very end of the war, ammunition supply is the biggest restriction on German issue of the Sturmgewehr. They have more guns than they have ammunition to ship to the front with them. And, uh, and the, the problem here is, how do we produce more ammunition for these things without producing less ammunition for the other stuff? And we need all the other stuff just as badly as we need these things. So the idea of replacing the MP40 with this means you can scale down production of 9mm ammo and replace it, essentially cartridge for cartridge, with 8mm Kurtz ammunition for the Sturmgewehr. And that's probably the critical factor that allowed for that change in doctrine. So what that does for the Army General Staff is it gives them the lever to truly start mass production of the Sturmgewehr. Because now they can say, crank up the factory, we need these guns, we need their ammunition as well, instead of trying to fight for you know, ammunition for this weird trials gun that's not formally adopted yet. Now it has been officially, like, it's, it's officially got a place in the, the German weapons environment. Um, like we need 30,000 of these things just to replace most of the MP40s that are already out there. So, or some of the MP40s that are out there. So crank up the factory. They are still absolutely planning to issue it to everybody and replace all the Mausers. They still don't they're not telling Hitler that, but now they can actually produce the guns to make that a reality, or try to, without running into Hitler's uh, objection. Because ostensibly, this is just for some machine gun replacement. Um, for what it's worth, in November, the very next month, November of 43, the organizational branch of the German army general staff officially orders that every soldier is going to be armed with an MP44, or an MP43 at that point. Um, at that point, at this stage, November 43, that's not a practical decision, it's just a theoretical decision, because there are not nearly enough of these guns to actually make that a reality yet, but we can continue to see that this was the intent of all, the, all along, the whole time. Finally, in January of 44, Hitler actually changes his mind on the whole G43 and K98K thing, and accedes to a request, or actually, because, of course, at this point it must be his idea to do it. Uh, he requests that two divisions in Russia be completely re-equipped with MP43s uh, to test them out, and see if they are in fact a suitable replacement for the standard infantry rifles. It's interesting at this point that the, the Army General Staff plans were essentially to consolidate everything into MP43s. They're going to replace the Car 98K Mausers, they're going to replace the MP40 submachine guns, they're going to replace the G43s and K43 rifles, and there was a, a real debate over replacing the MG42 with this thing as well. We just give whole units these things, kind of like there was a, a move towards the Russians giving whole units submachine guns. 
Now this would never replace the MG42s. Uh, that was pretty controversial on the part of officers in the field who were trialing these guns and asked about it. But January of 44, finally Hitler says, give two divisions all these things. And a couple months later, in April of 44, he issues a formal weapons consolidation plan, which again, definitely all his idea at this point, uh, which will in fact replace the MP40 and the Car 98K, both with MP43s. So at that point it's kind of a done deal. Now this is going to be a mass-produced gun, and at long last the German uh, army general staff can actually try to start producing the guns and the ammunition to make them a reality. Now we won't get into how many actually got into the field, that's a bit beyond the scope here. I think it's worth considering a couple of the other factors that may have changed Hitler's mind, the things that were going on. So, in fact I have the, the numbers written down here. Uh, the Russians were massively increasing their use of submachine guns. In July of 41, the standard Russian division had 162 submachine guns in it. A year later, in July of 42, they had 712, so it's basically quadrupled in number. And a year after that, by the summer of 43, a standard Russian division has like 1,500 submachine guns. That's the sort of firepower difference that the Germans are having to encounter, and they need to come up with their own way to balance that out. Now, what probably was most responsible for changing Hitler's mind on this, and there's no documentation of it that I've found, but it is good speculation, is personal interference by Heinrich Himmler, uh, or personal intervention by Himmler. Himmler of course ran the SS, and the SS had its own independent weapons procurement from the formal German army. And in 42 and 43 the SS is searching out, they want some new guns, and they've got a bunch of their own developmental plans. So they wanted a new 9mm submachine gun, it was going to be the MPSS-42. Uh, that gets nixed, that, get, that program gets shut down. They look at the MKB-42s, and they go, that's pretty cool, but we really want like some Wolfenstein level stuff. And they come up with the, like they want an MKB-42, but they want it in 8mm by 35, their own special cartridge, and then they want it belt fed. Like, enough of the magazines, magazines don't give us enough DACA, we want mag or belt fed individual intermediate cartridge assault blasters. That get shut down as well, but what we see is the SS as an organization recognize the importance of um, individual firepower for the troops, and they communicated that up to Himmler. Uh, by the time their really goofy projects all get shut down, the one remaining realistic opportunity for more firepower for SS units is the Sturmgewehr. And they basically tell Himmler, like, this is what we need. And Himmler uh, was more willing to listen to the experience of his field officers and, and take it into account and, and, and believe them than Hitler was. Hitler had his own opinions about what the army needed in terms of equipment, and because he was the end decider, uh, his opinions can be, in a way, were the official doctrine of the German army. So it's likely that Himmler had a discussion or a couple discussions and was able to convince him that this intermediate cartridge select fire rifle was in fact a good idea. So whew, uh, that is the full story behind, essentially, Hitler cancelled the Sturmgewehr, which he literally did on no less than three separate occasions. And yet despite that, the German army general staff continued to develop the thing for about two years behind his back and against his direct orders, uh, until he finally came around and accepted the thing. And this would go on to be really the foundational, um, the, the first functional serving used rifle of what would set the standard for uh, modern combat rifles really pretty much up to today. The, the intermediate cartridge um, configuration, this sort of platform, continues on to military armaments today. So, uh, NATO would, would follow, in, in some ways NATO would follow the, the Hitler view of we need a full power semi-automatic rifle, we need our G43, I mean M14s, uh, until eventually they, they came back around. The Soviets got it earlier on with 7.62 by 39. NATO would take a little bit longer before they adopt 5.56, but that's what we have today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, bit of a deep dive into the history. Thanks for watching.